Okay, fellas, we're getting ready for our first test on this nozzle here. The first test always fails in my life. But I might get lucky. Let's see what happens with this thing. Uh, my predictions are that the penstock is going to be too narrow to um, siphon enough oil to function properly with this air ratio. And if that's the case, we'll simply have to hook an oil pump up to it. And if that does happen, I will build another nozzle with a larger pen stock. It's very windy out right now, so this test is going to be a little bit botched by the wind. This is pure synthetic waste oil. There's no gasoline added to this. I might end up having to add some gas. There we go. Looking good. trying to get it on there. I noticed the device seemed to work better when that nozzle was out here. It was weird. We're gonna have to test that. I put it on while I was running. Check that out, boys. When it was like way out here like this, that sucker was running good. Had a real nice flame to it. So tomorrow, as soon as I take care of some business, uh, I think we're gonna run this thing like this. Something about that air breathe right there. Maybe it's breathing some air on us. I was really pleased with what I saw before I got, as I started to beat it on all the way, the performance decreased. So pretty strange. At any rate, that nozzle was a success, fellas. There's one thing I need to tell you though. It did not work when I initially hooked up a small hose. You have to have a very large hose like this, guys. This is a 3 8 or a 5 8 I don't know. It looks like a 5 8 OD. And I had to elevate my oil. There was no gas in this oil whatsoever. I simply preheated the combustion chamber using a uh, map gas torch and um, was easily able to get this to uh, behave as a siphon nozzle. Now I can tell you right now, because it works so well as a siphon nozzle, it would do even better as an induced flow nozzle or a pumped nozzle. 
It's got a little bit of carbon on the face there. I was kind of fiddling around with it, trying to find its home. But uh, very pleased. Very pleased. I was a little worried when it didn't work when I had this line hooked up. I felt like a complete jackass. Here I am trying to help guys out, show them how to do something. And you need a pump. A lot of people don't have a pump for oil. So I wanted to build you guys a siphon nozzle. It requires just an air compressor. And see, we're running just under 100 psi to do that. And from what I've seen in the flame, I would guess that we were looking at about a 35,000 to 40,000 watt flame. It looked right around about around um, four liters an hour. I've been doing a lot of this lately, so I'm, I'm pretty close in those approximations. I wouldn't uh, put any money on it, but definitely very close. At any rate, uh, man, that was pretty cool. And <laughs> this nozzle is a complete success. Fantastic. So, if you haven't seen the build video on this nozzle and you're just watching the performance, I'll leave a link in the description. It uh, shows exactly how we built this bad boy. This is a low wattage nozzle. You're probably not going to be able to push over 50 kilowatts with this thing. Maybe so. If you've got a lot of air, you could probably do it pretty easily. But um, the dimensions of that uh, manual orifice may prohibit that as the velocity becomes exceedingly great. It's a pretty high velocity nozzle right there as far as the air, but nonetheless, I like how it works. And if you guys go build one of these nozzles and you try hooking it up to a straight piece of pipe, it's not gonna work, fellas. You have to have this elbow. I discovered that what's happening with this elbow is right in the inside corner is a rolling fireball. A vortex takes place. It's an eddy current, essentially. That eddy current, is a highly sought after um, constituent of combustion that is actually implemented in high performance burners. They do an annular rotating smoke ring fireball type thing in most uh, waste oil burners. It recirculates the air, or doesn't recirculate, they use two different speed wind streams and a roll takes place when the two wind streams meet. They'll have a low speed wind stream and a high speed and it causes a roll. And a fireball lives inside of that roll and continually ignites combustion for a 